Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Another lovely, beautiful day. It's October by the time this comes out, but it is still feeling like summer. It's like supposed to be 92 today. I'm so happy. Can't complain about that. I wish it could stay like this all year, but it can't. That's okay. I have been out here just kind of putting around with my drippers, checking them out, making sure nothing's clogged or anything like that. Sometimes different times of the year, the flow and the water pressure can kind of shift around. That's why I kind of like the adjustable drip heads because sometimes when I use the ones that are like rated with how many gallons they do, if my water pressure drops, like say if it's really hot outside and a lot of people have their sprinklers running, something like that, then sometimes I don't get quite the flow I need out of them, whereas with these I can pop them open. And if they, these right here, these adjustable guys, if they do clog up sometimes, you can just pull the top right off of there and whatever is in the way will come out. There are special little devices that you need to put in with your drip systems, like little screens to help large debris from getting into your drip lines. Sometimes, things still get through. And hopefully, this is in focus because I can't see my screen. <laughs> Off to a great start. Yeah, there we go, that's pretty good. I'm actually gonna let these get a really heavy watering today because like I said, 92, gonna be kind of warm. And the air is very dry because, you know, it's not actually summer anymore, is it? I wish it was, but the air is starting to dry out a little bit, not that much. It's actually been incredibly humid, but like, I don't know, I'm for it. it I kind of like it. Is anybody else weird like that? It doesn't really bother me that much. It can be kind of shocking right when you step outside and it's like, oh my goodness, the air is so thick, but it's like, it's nice not having the dry skin and everything like that and don't have to water as much the orchids, particularly my vandacious orchids where their roots all hang out and exposed, they really really appreciate the humidity. Now, these were just watered like, I don't know, probably an hour ago, and there's still some green in there. When the air starts to get drier here and that humidity drops, these things, you water them and like within 15 minutes, they're starting to turn white again and get thirsty. Any day now, it's gonna be so pretty. There's another one back there. At least one other one back there. I think they're my, I'm pretty sure there's two others actually. Oh, and here's something that doesn't happen very often. Look at it. Oh, well, come on now. Do you want to play along? Excuse you. Look at how pretty that is. Got all three and bloom right next to each other at the same time. You know, hibiscus, their flowering is pretty free and they tend to go through rest periods. So these don't often have flowers right next to each other all at the same time. It's really pretty. Makes me happy. That was a fun thing to walk outside to. I knew they all had buds on them, but I didn't think that they would all pop open so close to each other, like timing wise. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe it's not that exciting. It was exciting to me. But look at, look at this. Oh, can't zoom in on this. Okay. The flower on the Alexander palm popped open. It looks Really cool and kind of gross. Got a Medusa kind of thing going on. Oh, and how could I forget? There's a flower on one of my favorite hibiscus that doesn't have a name. It's really nice color to it. It's kind of salmon-y <laughs> on camera, but in person there's a lot of like coral and pink variation in there. Still some salmon, but it's very nice. And I love the foliage on it too. This particular hibiscus has that nice, stiff, green, glossy foliage. That's I know, kind of a weird thing to have a preference with foliage on hibiscus. <laughs> Everybody grows them for the flowers, but that's my preference. I like that nice green and crisp dark foliage. Oh, I suppose in like three or four minutes, maybe even five minutes into this vlog, I should maybe talk about what's going on this week. Well, as I've been out here messing with my drippers, you may notice there's no drippers in this one. I got them set up over there, but not over here. This actually does have drippers set up to it, but that timer's busted. Which means everything from here all the way down isn't getting watered. I'm watering by hand, but I didn't notice for a couple of days that they weren't on, and it's been a very unseasonably warm, which I, I love. I like the unseasonably warmness, and I hope it stays that way this season. 
But uh, the plants need water. Oh, especially the bananas. They're very thirsty. They're always thirsty. They're banana trees. But yeah, I thought about just waiting until next year to get a new timer and everything. But I was like, I feel like I should probably go ahead and just do it now <laughs> so that in the springtime I can just bring it back out. Because, you know, you need to bring those in during the wintertime. They shouldn't freeze and just have it ready to set up. I feel like in the spring I'll regret just not doing it now. And every time I'm out here spending like two and a half to three hours watering plants, I'll regret it then too. So run to Lowe's, get a timer. Hopefully they still have them. Things are already, yeah, already Christmas stuff everywhere. Oh, this wasn't recording for a long time and I have no idea what I missed that I was saying. If you're excited for the holidays, then that's fantastic. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's fun having change and whatnot. I'll be excited too once all my plants are inside. I have these alacages here. This is, I believe, a plumbe metallica. I need to pot it up. I need to bump it up a size because I'm not going to let this one go dormant this winter. I'm going to try and keep it going in an active state of growth. And I don't want to have to water it absolutely, just constantly. So it needs a larger pot. And it'll have, hopefully, at least some months to get going into its pot. Ideally, six to eight weeks would be better, but you know, the Better late than never, depending on the situation, right? Oh, so, run to Lowe's. Haven't been there in a bit, like maybe two weeks, if even. Get a timer, some potting soil, see what's going on with their plants. Like, hi, butterfly. How'd you, where'd you go? Okay. Yep, yep, here. Do I need to announce that? I feel like it's pretty obvious once I get in there and start working on plants, isn't it? So I suppose if anyone's new to the channel, they may not be aware that I basically live here. Hi, here's Lowe's. Let's want to do a house tour? Welcome to my home. But the only problem with vlogging here is whenever I come in, I tend to, I forget why I'm here. I remember right now though. Soil and timer. I got that. Oh, they have one of my favorite maples. Isn't that beautiful? It's the Crimson King Norway maple, right? Crimson King Norway maple. Aren't those beautiful? The foliage absolutely stunning it stays darker like this it varies throughout the year but it stays darker and it has a great glossy sheen to it you can see it a little bit better up there well not really it's a beautiful maple they're stunning uh Lowe's stop stealing my pickup lines <laughs> that's nasty wonder what that means they put a hay maze in the back oh I was wondering what that meant cute oh and it actually is an actual maze I would go in, but I'm getting itchy literally just standing here. Hey, I, oh, my skin does not like it. What am I doing? Oh, I was looking at the hay. <laughs> like, why am I back here? Oh, this cute little arborvitae. It's on clearance for four bucks. It's got a little bit of brown in it. That's really not that big of a deal for four dollars. Those are cute. Oh, I want to do planter things with them. I'm not going to, though. I have enough projects going on. But they are adorable. There's something about, like, just tiny evergreens that just melts my heart. Mm, yes, this will do. It's a little bit basic for that price. I would like two valves. This is like I talked about before, water pressures kind of a thing sometimes. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. See? It has four spots in there. Four outlets. Four outlets. So you can get a lot more done with that as far as water pressure goes. My only concern is, like, this one's clearly been pulled out and put back in. And then there were a couple others where I just was a minute ago that were also like that. So I'm like, is this risky? That price is better than what I paid for my others that were for, uh, for outlet. Should be okay. Now, in the spot where it's going, I actually only need two outlets. But I had to replace another timer earlier in the year, and I ordered, and I think it was an Orbit one off of Amazon, and said it, it had uh, three, and I was like, well, that's perfect. Turns out it has two plus, like, an extra one where you can just turn it to turn your hose on. It's just a manual spot for your hose. It was misleading. So I can put the four-port one where I needed that one. I know this is so entertaining, right? I can swap them out and make them work better. That's that's the whole point. Uh, I've never used these Mr. Timer brands before. Y'all let me know if these are any good. I haven't tried them. One thing that has really changed over the years is there are so many options for getting your plants watered automatically, like this hive right here. I should put that back. That was rude of me. Like I would be on top of this if I could control more. I don't only have one outlet on it. I need like, I don't know, 12. Oh. I really like him. He's so happy. Hey, 
last week I said I didn't like sassy pumpkins and I liked happy pumpkins, but I meant to say it was like ghoulish, angry, scary pumpkins. Like I'm uh, this dude. He's so mad. Why? Why you? Well, someone did cut your face up. I guess you can be angry. That's fine. And that seems reasonable. I would be upset too. Can I move your jaw? I mean, not really. Okay, and by the way, who else is just obsessed with these Frankie Fotonias? I absolutely love the one that I bought, like, I don't know, even a couple months ago. They're just so stinking pretty. There's something special about the way the white blends in with the green and the pink and the variegation. It stands out a little bit more nicely than just from the uh, regular Fotonias, which I think are beautiful too, but Frankie, Frankie, you just, you're pretty. Um, they have, like, a killer houseplant selection right now. I mean, this location usually does, but I'm liking the ivies. There's some marantas around here. The gold star crotons, which are great for texture if you're doing, like, houseplant arrangements. And then, look at... It's so pretty. Oh, <laughs> I just had my phone. I couldn't find my phone. I left it sitting over there, which is not smart. Never do that. Because I was looking at these alocasias here. Does it bother anyone how I bounce back and forth between alocasia and alocasia? Yes? No? That's not going to change. I'm sorry. Well, looks like this is where I live now. Excuse you. I, I kind of, I, I need to, I need to be where you are. Could you just, well, you don't need to be skittish. I'm not here to hurt you. Just go somewhere else. Go on. Go. You don't, okay, you're feisty. <sighs> Jeez, get the HD on you, see how scratched up the car is. Would you? Go on. Go on. Go on to where the grasshoppers go. Bye bye. Let's go. Really, dude? I need to go. Get off the car. You're going to be real scared if I start driving. I don't want to scare. Oh, <laughs> that's not a good shot. <laughs> I don't want to hurt it. You got to go somewhere else, man. You got to leave. That's not leaving. You need to find a new car to sit on. What are we going to do here? Go on. <laughs> Hip again. I don't know if I hit recording time, but she just gave me a very cute meow. So, Want to hear a fun story? Not that fun, actually. I, <laughs> I forgot to get potting soil. So <laughs> let's go back to the store. Whoops. Well, I figured I'd mix it up and go to Home Depot since I was just at Lowe's. But, well, what's that about? The gates are closed. I don't, how am I supposed to, I'm not going to go in through the main entrance and haul a bunch of giant bags of dirt through the store. What the heck? I don't under, maybe they got short staffed. Don't have a cashier. I mean, you, that would make sense, right? Can't have the department open at the entrance if there's no cash. Oh, this is weird. I guess since I'm here, we can go in and have a look at some things, but... Like I said, I don't really see myself hauling potting soil from down there all the way to that far end of everything and then coming back over here, because why, why would I? That doesn't make sense. I don't want to get dirt all over the store. They have some nice looking Defenbachios over here. Some Crotons, but otherwise it's just kind of same old, same old. This is camouflage, if you were wondering. Oh. Hey, these are cute. Twelve ninety eight, not too bad. A lot of succulents for thirteen dollars. Well, that was kind of a big waste of time because the potting swell they had at Home Depot was like just sopping wet, all of it. Which is weird. I don't remember it raining anytime recently, so I'm not sure what that was all about. I dug through the pallet and I managed to find a bag that wasn't like totally saturated but still a little bit wet and that's okay for the soil to be kind of moist but like I said it hasn't rained here in like several days so if they're sopping wet I'm just going to assume that I'm not gonna like what comes out of those bags but I mean I saw some cute plants so that's fun and I did I grabbed a little ficus a little uh, ficus puma up they're kind of hard to find in good shape sometimes so just like usually by the time I get to them that is they're not looking too hot and they had just come in they looked pretty good so I grabbed one for a project I'm gonna be working on and that's pretty much it they opened up the 
Yates, so I was able to grab a bag. <laughs> Make sure to preface with that. It's like, I got, at least I got one bag. I have some at home, so it's not that big of a deal. Oh, I missed you too, Pumpkin. I missed you too. You're such a good girl. You roll over? Roll over. Oh, that was a good roll over, Pumpkin. You're so good at rolling over. Easy war. Hi. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, here's that little Pumala. See, it was in, like, decent shape. It's got, like, a couple little crispy leaves in there. But normally by the time I find these at the nursery, the nursery, I mean, at Home Depot or Lowe's or, you know, the big box stores, they tend to look a little bit sad. So I want to go ahead and grab them while it's still looking nice and fresh. I like the variegation on these. They're super simple, easy to grow houseplant. I like them a lot. Just cute. I like the nice, dainty, little, delicate foliage. This is actually one where I prefer the regular form over the variegated but I don't see it as often unless it's already in like a hanging basket and then they're like, you know, $20 and I don't, I just, I just need a little one. That's all. Okay, it's been a few days and I have some bad news. Y'all fall came in today. I'm not ready for it. Not one bit. The forecast, it just changed. I mean, it wasn't really that abrupt. Basically, the last day I was vlogging, the last time we talked, um, that morning it was like, oh, it's going to be nice for like a while. And then it'll like steadily cool off. And then I checked the forecast later that night and it was like, nah, you get like a couple more days in the 90s and then it's just going to get cold. I mean, I consider 64 cold because it's not warm enough to run around in shorts and like jump in a swimming pool. It's not summer. You know what I mean? It's also not like, like I'm not freezing my butt off, anything like that. So I use those two days to uh, do some other things and uh, enjoy the outdoors. So that's what's been going on. And now there's like days coming up where it's gonna be like 44 at night. And just, uh, you know, fall stuff, the way fall goes. Hey, Bookin, how you doing, bud? Good morning, sweetie. Just look away from the camera. That's nice of you. You're a good girl. Uh, can I help you? Get off my foot, nasty. It has a fascination with these cabinets. If you just like crack the door, oh my goodness, what's going on? What is this magical wall that's appeared before me? What are you doing? You yeah, but see, here's the thing though. You can't play with trash. Sorry, not a toy. I have to close it. I know, that was mean of me. I'm so sorry. Also, this is a very bad example to be setting. If you have a parrot, no, it's not okay for them to go walk around the ground. I'm lucky enough to have pets that are terrified of my birds, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But they can also get into things that aren't good for them. Come here. Oh, what, what, what you doing? You being a rebel? Yeah, get up there. What are you doing? What are you doing? You little rebellious birdie. You say good morning to everybody? Say hi. No, nothing? Yeah, it's kind of chilly, isn't it? Might be time to turn the heat on. Can we get a kiss? Say hello? 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 Focus, at least. Can we do that, camera? BJ. Okay, well, we tried. Cosmo, you're always good for kisses. Can we get a kiss? Can we get a kiss? Oh, that was a good kiss. You're so sweet. Yes, you are. Cameron doesn't like focusing on birdies. Oh, we gonna dance? We gonna do a dance? Yes? No? No dancing? Okay. No, well, people always want to see more pets, but <laughs> sometimes the pets don't do much. This one's basically a rug. Right, Toby? Oh, well, at least you acknowledged me. Yes, you good boy. You're so cute and sweet with your tiny little head. I, that wasn't an insult. I love you. You're perfect just the way you are. Yes, you are. Good boy, Toby. Good, don't submit. You're a good boy. He has such a guilty conscience. I don't know why he does that. He's, like, never been in trouble. He's always been just, like, pretty much a perfect dog. Even when he was a puppy, Tucker was a nightmare puppy. Oh, my goodness. Like, there were gates up in the kitchen for, like, three years with him. Three years of crate training and everything. Because he, he had a lot of energy. And with all the training and everything, it still just wasn't enough for Tucker. Whereas... <laughs> Toby was wrong, pumpkin. But with Toby, he was just good. Like, always. You were always good. You were always such a good boy. Yes, you were. Did the training and everything with him, but it was almost unnecessary because he just... 
I think part of it was he had Tucker as an example. Tucker had heavy, 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 heavy training for years. And uh, so maybe Tucker was a good example. I don't know. But he was just perfect. I don't know where the guilty... I mean, it's just a submission thing. Tucker's the alpha, so Toby's just a very, very submissive dog. What are you sniffing the mail for? Hey, baby girl. You such a good girl. Hey, Charlie's up. Charlie. Hi. Yeah, good morning to you, too. He's an old man. Needs a good brushing. I know. You want to play. We already had a cookie party. I don't know what to tell you, sweetie. I'm sorry. And my oven light's on, and I cannot figure out why. Like, it's just... Why? Why is the oven light on? Came down this morning. Light on. Why? Maybe I need to do that. Some of those things. Turn off. No? What's going on? Like, leave it open and slowly close it. Hit it again. There we go. What the heck? I don't even use the top oven that often. I mean, I do sometimes. This is my sweater because I'm freezing. But um, <laughs> some stuff's built in it, and I just, I've been too lazy to clean it. So I've been sticking with the bottom oven for a long time. So it's, I don't know why that was even on. That's weird. Don't give me two ovens because one will get dirty and I'll just use the other one. She's just the cutest thing. So uh, I'm a little bit confused because see what happened is that in the bit, hi, I'm over here. There's a great angle. The beginning of the vlog, I thought it was going to be really warm out like all week and then that completely changed and isn't the case at all. <laughs> they talk plants about let's stop by nursery and do some plant shopping. No, not really, just kind of browsing. A lot of things go on clearance this time of year and I like to check it out. And this nursery usually has some cute house plants. Like here's a tiger fern, it's a Boston fern, but with neat foliage and they have a good selection of smaller plants for terrariums and things like that so I just kind of I was like let's check it out these are some really nice looking pothos they're gigantic they grow so fast that I don't really care about that I have plenty but it looks nice Ooh, look at this croton isn't that cute the variety is called um golden bell it's gorgeous but I'm pretty good on crotons Look at this Aurelia. Man, that thing has some nice, girthy growth on it. Oh, how you doing, Anthurium? It's a nice little philodendron. Doesn't have a variety name on it, so not gonna draw any conclusions, but oh, it is cute. Okay, that's a winner for foliage. Isn't it pretty? I love that. Hey, another cool looking croton. Don't see a variety name, but it looks neat and nice monster deliciosa. Oh, that Prince of Orange philodendron, one of my favorites. How much do you love these deer ferns? Aren't they neat? The foliage is almost like the cartoon version of a fern. Stiff and waxy and green. So stinking cute. Oh, here's the tag, if you were curious. Deer fern. And the info. Right there. Feel free to pause. Let me take my hand off the name. There you go. Oh, my goodness, I was almost decapitated. I keep the umbrella at an angle in the morning. Just because the way the sun comes through here, and it can be a bit blinding and intense, and it just went, whew. That wasn't fun. Exciting stuff, right? So the main reason I went to that nursery was one, just because I was passing it, and it's that time of year when things are going on clearance, and I have that gap over here behind the palm trees where I have a big pine tree. I need to replace where I need to replace a pine tree. I'm sorry, <laughs> talking's hard. Y'all know what's going on there. Pine tree died, need to put something new in this big gap, preferably something evergreen to go up in there. So I wanted to see if things were in clearance yet, because I'm just, I'm probably gonna put one of the green giant arborvitas, arborvitaes in there or maybe a blue spruce. I haven't decided yet, I, but I want it to fill in quickly, so I'll probably go with one of the green giants. They're cheap, they're big, and uh, they're sturdy, generally. So that's probably the direction I'm gonna go, but I would rather get them on clearance because I just personally feel that most of the time they're kind of overpriced, so 
I'd like to get it for cheap. I mean, I'd like to get everything for cheap, wouldn't we all? And with everything being on sale, I couldn't help myself. They're just too cute. It was buy two, get one free. So there is a third plant. There's actually a fourth that I'll show you in just a minute. But look at... It's just... They're just the cutest. And the uh, lady who uh, takes care of all of the uh, perennials, she's really into ferns. And she informed me that these are usually semi-evergreen, which is nice. That's something I'm always going for. It's one of the things I like about the Draptoris and the like Christmas ferns and holly ferns and things like that. It just has such cute texture, doesn't it? It's so nice. It's almost cycad like Almost. It is rem like, reminds me of a certain type of cycad. I just can't quite put my finger on it and what that is. But they're adorable. Like I said, deer ferns. Y'all saw the tag just a minute ago. And then isn't this one beautiful? Yeah, look at that. Those go so well together. I'll have them spaced out differently when it's time to put them together and whatnot that'll still be this is going to happen after i have the tropicals moved in but you know at that point the nurseries don't have anything so you kind of have to get them sooner but this is the uh, primo wild rose hookera from proven winners i did have one of the primo black pearls on the cart with these and i was like i really liked it you know they that one has a really dark foliage it's glossy with kind of a rosy underside that's similar in color to this one right here but I decided to go with the Wild Rose instead. I uh, kind of like the contrast a little bit more. I mean, there's a lot of contrast with the Black Pearl, but it has very glossy foliage, and so do these ferns. So I thought that this would stand out a little bit better with that more of a matte finish. And this isn't really how I'll have them set up and displayed. They'll be spaced a little bit differently and kind of at somewhat different heights. I set it on a box back there. <laughs> So there's kind of that effect right now, but not so much. I just kind of had to put them together on this little table to make them easier to see. But I really like that. And the hookahs are sometimes semi-evergreen, so that is perfect. Then hopefully it'll work out that way. Just depends on the winter. You never know around here. And best part, one of those was free. Gotta love that, right? This is kind of a better view. I have sort of a menagerie of things over here that I'm getting ready to plant up and do some work with. I need to... Do something with that stramanthi that's back there, but you can see them a little bit better. Pardon my bucket. Always got buckets around. So I like to throw my things in there when I'm doing videos so that they don't go over the patio. But yeah, looks better from here. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, with the stramanthi in the background, it's hard for that to not look pretty, right? Okay, and the last one, I was a little bit surprised by. Like, it's not a plant I usually go for, but I mean, just I'll show you. It's a mum. And look at it. I mean, tell me that that is not just stunning. Isn't it beautiful? And even better, it's a garden mum. When I was walking past, I was like, oh, that's a pretty aster. And then I saw the foliage on there. Sorry, foliage. For the few people who actually pronounce it that way. And I was like, no, that's that's a mum. And I found one that had a tag. And I got the tag. It's the Amphi... Okay. There's its label right here. Amphi on purple from Ball. And it's a garden mum. Typically, when you have the petals like this on a mum, it's usually a floral mum. So those are still usually a little bit bigger. And this isn't like a super unusual thing. Mums have looked like this for years. It's just I haven't seen them sold like this in a very long time. Typically, you know, they're just the typical garden mum. You know, white, red, orange, kind of a mauvish pink color. Sometimes you see a purple mixed in there. And the petals are very heavy and you don't see the center on them which gives them more of like kind of a daisy appearance practically it like i said i just i don't see it often not anymore i used to but not in a long time so i was really excited to see this and it was only like eight dollars i mean come on this is gigantic too here's here's a hand look at this it is so big that actually doesn't it looks way bigger in person and it smells divine. My car on the drive home smelled so good. And it's that bright bubblegum pink, which is just amazing. I like that because one, it's not that fallish. Maybe I'm not that into the fall colors, apparently. I don't know. I mean, you've seen my garden. I tend to like really bright, vivid, intense colors. And with this bubblegum pink, that was called purple. 
So you feel free to correct me. Oftentimes I see reds as pinks and pinks as reds and blues and green. I my my vision with color not fantastic, but it looks very vibrant and pink to me. But y'all let me know. Not that I need to tell you. Everybody, that's that's not how the internet works. Yeah, I don't know. I see pink, even though it's labeled as purple. But come on, beautiful plant, right? And if you didn't, the garden mums, excuse you. There we go. Garden mums are perennial so put them in the ground they'll come back every single year whereas the floral mums which are what typically have petals more like this but they're still usually uh, much larger and more or floral you know what you get what i'm saying those are annuals so this i was just like i can't believe that this is a perennial garden mum and they used to sound like this i just haven't seen them in years it's just you know the same old typical garden mums everywhere this is beautiful. I really should have gotten more of them because I don't know what I'm going to do with just one. If I had grabbed three of them, then I think that I could have planted them up very nicely around something nice and tall and then kind of filled in the little gaps with pansies and kales and cabbage. Oh, it would be so stinking cute. But that's not what I did because I wasn't really out to start a new project. So I just got the one. And then over the years, they can be divided and whatnot. I just, ugh, it makes me so happy. Such a beautiful, cheery, happy mum. I can smell it from over here. It just smells fantastic. And I will probably, more than likely, be potting this up into like a little barrel, like a little plastic one, something like that, and then I'll overwinter it in a mulch pile with my bananas. And I have more of the Artemisia that I planted up with some asters. I have some more of that over here, so I might even do that. I think that silver would look really pretty in there. If there's room, that is. Yeah, that goes very, very nicely together, doesn't it? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Great camera work, right? I just need to put them together so you can see, right? Very pretty. It'll do at least for this time of year. Because the Artemisia is one in quartz too, so I grabbed a couple more of them. A little bit more shabby looking. That's also because I get really hesitant with watering Artemisias because I am a heavy-handed waterer. And they don't like that, especially when temperatures are cool. And at least that's been my experience with them. Some people, they just grow flawlessly. I, t I tend to rot them out. It's one of those plants, kind of like rosemary, where it's like, I need to distance myself from it in order for it to do well. But really, this time of year, that's not normally a problem because it's not piping hot outside. It's when it's really hot out and I'm like, okay, I really want to water you. I really want to, even though I know I shouldn't. That's, yeah. That's a non-issue for now. And I know I started this vlog off shopping for a timer, right? So I can get things going with my um, irrigation system because I have that one broken timer. And then when the forecast changed, I was like, well, there's absolutely no reason to be swapping out my timers right now. So I'll just hold off on that till spring. When temperatures are cool like this, I'll actually, I'll go ahead and put my forecast up here on the screen because people are always asking about how I decide how to do things. And this forecast that's here, this is typically where I go, okay, I'm going to cut back on watering now. I'm, I'm still going to water the plants, but just not as much. The drippers don't need to run as often because the, these cooler temperatures, the plants aren't taking stuff up. So there's no reason to. I really get frustrated when I start a vlog with intentions of certain things happening and it just doesn't work out that way. That's also just life, right? Sometimes that's the way things go. It's a lot of, it's just out of my control. Can't, you know, can't control everything, especially the weather. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Another fun-filled week of what the hell just happened. And, you know, I think part of the reason I get frustrated is because it's really hard to title a video where there's nothing specific going on and it's just randomness. That's also unfortunately just kind of the nature of vlogs when you vlog throughout the week instead of just like one main task. Pumpkin, you gotta stop doing that. Be a lady. People don't need to see your pumpkin on camera. Pumpkin, don't do that. Hey, that's bad. Don't do that. Stop it. Pumpkin, bad. Don't do that. Thanks. Don't tear up the furniture. I wish cats could understand us the way dogs do, because she's done a number on these bar stools. And you can put tape on them. The problem is she likes to eat tape, so that's not an option. I've thought about maybe putting a towel over here, but if she were to slip and fall, she could like really hurt herself. She doesn't always land on all fours, so I don't want to do that. What are you doing? You can't eat my tacos. Those are my tacos. Yeah. 
trying out the new vegetarian menu. It's just, it's the same thing us non-meat eaters always order where we just substitute black beans for whatever the meat was. And you know, you take the cheese and sour cream and all that stuff off. But it is nice that they actually have it on the menu so I can just say, hey, can I get the bla black bean crunch wrap without the cheese and whatnot? It's just a little bit easier. There's something nice when you don't eat meat, being able to run and like go through a drive through and just grab something really quick, even though it's terrible for you, like on a rare occasion having that treat. It's nice. I've never had a Baja Blast before either, and I guess apparently I liked it. My first sip, I was like, ew, and then I drank most of it. It's just a cup of chemicals, so I didn't really have very high expectations. More random things that have nothing to do with anything. Typically, I like to end my vlogs with giving a forecast of what's going on next week, but look what happened this week. I, don't, I can't tell you. It's a tricky time of year. Do you smell the nursery? There's a kitty there. I know. I need to go get new jeans, don't I? These are too big. They don't fit. Yeah, just with the weather being all over the place, there's kind of like a period in October where I just kind of sit still and chill and wait and start prepping things, you know, but we've already been over that, so I don't see a reason to drag that along in the vlogs too much. I just, you know, cut the annuals out and whatnot. I mean, apparently I really liked it. I was trying to figure out what it tastes like and I think maybe hypnotic. You remember that stuff? It's been a minute since I've had it, but it like maybe once the ice melted in, I don't know. I don't know, that's just the vibe I was getting from it. I could take it or leave it. Basically, I'm just saying it needs alcohol. It was cute. Okay. <laughs> this has turned into nothing but randomness and ridiculousness. It's cause I'm, I'm kind of sleepy, been a day, and my brain, it's just, it's not worth it. Look at this teeny tiny itty bitty little hibiscus flower. It's so little. I talked about in the hibiscus video how the cooler weather brings out little tiny flowers. That's a little one. She's little and cute. Oh, and I had said I would give updates when some of the others bloom. So there's another bud right there. Isn't that one just stunning? I remember seeing this one like multiple times at the nursery I think it was at Lowe's and I didn't get it and eventually I was like I just keep thinking about it I don't know why I like it so much but there's just something about it that I don't know made me happy not typically what I go for with the white and the pink but you know we all grow our tastes change and that's okay it's good it helps diversify things what are you smelling what are you smelling, Blinken? You sniffing things? Okay. Okay, I'm zoomed in as close as I can get. That's why it's wobbly, but do you see this? A literal frog on a lily pad. I thought that was just some stuff from cartoons. I mean, I knew that they actually did do it. I have just never actually seen it in person. I know, not that exciting, but still kind of cute. Also not, that's a bullfrog and there's a lot of little fish in there that it might eat but i'm happy to host a little ecosystem um it's been a few days things got kind of busy around here i just didn't really feel like holding my hose there so gave everything a little bit of a watering if you saw last week's vlog you know that there is a bit of a hiccup in the editing process so i uh, just kind of did a quick I mean not really quick it was like a still a 30 something minute video for last Saturday but everything up until this point was meant to be out last week it was just one of those weeks where I just was being interrupted constantly and uh, I mean not like necessarily in a bad way it's just life you know people have questions need things family friends whatnot but I would just the every single video clip I had was just a mess so uh, well not every like 50 percent and i was like i don't have time to edit this and put it together to get it out for saturday so i filmed a video saturday morning which was a huge mistake took all day but i was still happy to do it just not how i, I don't like to rush things you know anyways there have been a few things that have happened went to the baseball game on monday it was an absolute blast one of the best games i've been to other than like a world series game probably the best game i've been to so much fun the seats were amazing and they haven't i know nobody cares about the sports i'm not going to go too far into it but i'm i'm having a blast with postseason stuff these alpinias have started to bloom which if you saw the garden tour from just a few days ago it should be the most recent video to this one 
I was concerned that maybe these wouldn't bloom for me before the cold rushed in, but they started popping open and I'm really happy about that. See, there's still several flowers up here that are starting to do their thing and get pretty. I'm leaving the other ones on here, the older ones, because I'm going to try and collect seed from those. We'll see. Some years they do put out little seed pods, some years they don't. They're not really seed pods, but basically in here this will swell up. Right in there, that'll swell up and sometimes I can get some seeds. I've never actually tried to harvest them before, but I don't know why they wouldn't be fertile or anything like that. Oh, that's a great shot. I did notice in the beginning of last weekend's vlog that for some reason the video was like really shaky. That wasn't my hand, that was the camera. I've been messing with some settings and it doesn't show when I'm recording. It only shows when I put it into my video editing software. And so I can put different stabilizers in and things like that, but like there's only so much it can do without really distorting the picture. So I'm sorry about that. It could be happening right now. I don't know. I'm the new camera is still figuring some things out here with settings. That should not be something that requires a lot with settings. So I'm really not thrilled about that. I mean, video stabilization is a pretty standard thing in most cameras now. So I don't know what that was about. Like I said, it could be happening right now, but I'm holding things very, very steady. And what's awkward and weird about it is that the beginning of that video, that entire video, I had the super stabilize on, which appeared to have, <laughs> which appeared to have made it worse. I, I don't know. I'm really hopeful that this entire video isn't going to be shaky like that one. I don't know what that's about. I mean, my hands move a little bit, but I'm trying my best to hold the camera as still as possible. I might have to order a gimbal which I'd rather not do because the good ones are very pricey, but it might be worth it if that's going to be an issue. But like I said, when I'm looking through here, through my viewfinder, everything looks smooth as can be, but then it gets up on the computer and I'm like, whoa, what's going on there? So because of that, I'm going to film the rest of this video in and out of that setting so I can experiment with things. If it's a mess and really shaky, I'm really sorry. I'm just, I'm learning here, <laughs> hopefully. I'll get it figured out sooner than later. And I learned a pretty valuable lesson here also, which is that in the future, when getting a new camera, film lots of little short videos, not even ones to go out on YouTube, just like practice videos and get those up into the editing software and play around with those so you can figure out the settings. Cause it's not smart to do it with like 30, 40 minute videos. I just, <laughs> rookie mistake, my bad. So right now what I'm doing is a mealy bug check. You know, I have to do this pretty often. They've been an issue throughout the years because of one plant I got from Home Depot that was on clearance. It was a calathea. And I remember I brought it home and I was like, oh, it has mealy bugs on it. And so I sprayed it down and I was like, it'll be fine. And now here we are three maybe even four years later, and I'm still trying to eradicate these little buttheads from my garden. Haven't used any uh, like harsh chemicals as of yet. It's all been natural treatments and tried using lace wings. And you can go back through the years. There's lots of videos on all the different things I've tried, but you name it, I've tried it with the exception of, like I said, some harsher chemicals. And if they show up again this year, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to go ahead and just bust out the big guns and get rid of them and just make sure I'm very careful and responsible about how I use the products because I just, I can't keep doing this. It's such a nightmare. And I don't like constantly spraying neem and even the, the things that are safe. I still don't like spraying those constantly because that does still float off and drift off and can affect other plants. And I would rather just go ahead and nip this in the bud. <laughs> bud, is a flower, but you can, but is it bud or bud? I don't know. You know, unfortunately, bugs and pests, they just kind of come along with things, right? It's sort of part of the process. Part of being a gardener just happens sometimes. It's not the end of the world. I'm kind of, if you can't tell, cleaning up, getting my piles of things set up to go out to the yard waste. Y'all have yard waste? I've learned a lot of places don't have that. We have a service out here that comes and gets your clippings and trimmings and things. See, now that looks shaky. Was it shaky? I'm not going to obsess over this. I will say I have been tempted to go back to the nursery. They only had three of these gorgeous, gorgeous mums, and I kind of want to go back and get the other ones just because I haven't seen perennial mums that look this beautiful and smell this fantastic in years. But the problem is I would imagine that they're more than likely all gone by now because <laughs> it's been a few days. But 
I might run up there and check that out real quick. And in the meantime, what's happening is I'm waiting for some perlite to dry out. I am going to repot that a la Kaja plum bay. I know things are over the place. It's because this time of year, it's all about watching the forecast. And the forecast is just back and forth and back and forth. And it looks like in the next like couple of weeks, there's only going to be a couple nights that are kind of cool. And I'm like, well, okay, I'll just move the plant in on those nights as opposed to have as opposed to having dirt and soil whatnot all over the place when I move the plants inside. And because I have reduced my drips down by about 50% with the cooler weather, sometimes things are drying out a little bit, requiring some hand watering. That they This seems a bit dramatic, but it, it happened. They got thirsty. It actually doesn't matter here when I get home. I'm going to go ahead and pull these annuals out and swap them out with some coleus. But I still don't, I want the soil to be moist when I plant something else in there. So I'm going to go ahead and give this plant a heavy drink, more for the sake of the soil and planting the coleus than for the impatient that doesn't really seem to be responding well to having the drippers turned down. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're done with you. I'm so sorry. Your time is up. Oh, and then my other point with um, getting the other plant hydrated so I can plant the coleus up. I also have my wheelbarrow here ready to go and I put a bunch of perlite in it and the, the, there was a hole in the bag. So the perlite got kind of wet so I'm just letting this sit out in the sun for a bit and I figure I'll go ahead run to the nursery. It's kind of nearby and um, just give things a moment to dry, come home and you, you're here, you'll see. This sweep it, no, neither here nor there. We'll talk about that later, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Trying to stay focused. On the nose staying focused, here's a better shot at that ginger but there's a screen here which is unfortunate for the camera angle, but I just love looking out the window and seeing those, especially at nighttime with the pool lit up and everything. Okay, it happened. The rest of this vlog is just gonna be randomness. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Apparently that's just where my brain's at today and we're all hanging out and just relaxing. Hi, Pumpkin. Yeah, you good girl, I love you so much. Oh, what are you doing? No, no, I gotta go. Where are you going? Why you always make me feel so bad for leaving, Pumpkin? <laughs> I love you. Okay. Quick love before I go. Here you go. Get some love. And... That's enough. Oh, and maybe let's not leave the windows open when we're not home. That seems stupid, doesn't it? Um, also, hey, I'm here. And I just remembered that in the vlog, y'all were just here with me. It's been a few days. For, it's like I've never vlogged before. What happened? I take a few days off and my brain just resets. I'm so sorry. I don't see the, um, what am I here for? The mums, though. But trees and shrubs are discounted. And there's a magnolia here that's been calling my name. Um, we're gonna catch up here in just a second. That's not it. I mean, that is absolutely beautiful. And I would love to have that, but even discounted. I don't, <laughs> I didn't, I don't think that's gonna fit in my car and um, quite fit the budget. Okay, I know it's a lot of money, but hold up. Look at the size of this thing. That's actually a really good price. I'm not getting it. Even though it is discounted, there's another beautiful one back here. But these are absolutely massive. Just gigantic. That is a great price for the lion's head. And they are... Wait, this one's 50 per... Oh, uh oh. Uh, okay, I guess because it's had some dye back on it. But that'll look fine in the spring. I'm gonna have to think about this one. Because that's a... That's an even better price. Uh, uh, oh, this one's 75% off. No label though, so I don't know what magnolia variety this is. Looks like it's just some sort of grandifolia. It's definitely not a Bracken's Brown Beauty. It's not the most attractive plant. But hey, 75% off of, why are there airplanes everywhere? It's like three of them right overhead. You guys seen these before? They're like pyramid pines. Isn't that cool? I'll get back so you can see them. Aren't those neat? I really like those. Those are cute. I'm, I don't need... We're just looking at plants for fun right now. I'm not getting any of these things I'm talking about, but it's just... They're cute. Oh, look how cute the spruce is. That's adorable. Oh my goodness. Look at the color on that. That is stunning. Even more so when I show it to you through my sunglasses. I know, that's cheating, but this is what I'm saying. Still pretty without it, though. Some sort of... Kingu? Ah, Sengu Kaku Light Yellow. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. It's so pretty. Look at that. So colorful. Okay, one last look at these lion heads because those are beautiful. I obviously would get the one that's 50% off if I were to get one. 
Mm, maybe. Actually, I gotta think about that a little bit. Okay, I don't think I'm even supposed to be over here. This is like this old section, but just look at, oh my gosh. Look at how cool this pine is. That is so neat. Someone, I think, already paid for that, so I'm not gonna go digging through it trying to find a label. Some sort of variegated pine. That is, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Also looks a little bit like it's dying. I mean, it's not. It's just the way the variegation comes through in some pines. It just makes them look kind of like what they look like when they're starting to die, but obviously not, because no reds and oranges. You probably know what I mean. This red bud could really use a pruning, couldn't it? Have to remember that in the springtime. Another thing to add to the list. It's one of the fun things about gardening. The trees get older and kind of get to reshape them, give them a rebound. Yeah, look at all that. You don't want that up against your house. That actually, I might get to pruning sooner than later. may not wait till spring on that, just because I don't want all that up against the side of the house. See that? No, that's bad. Just got home from the nursery, if you couldn't tell, and I was well behaved. D just kidding. No, I wasn't. I mean, I was. I needed the soil. This is a soil blend I haven't tried before. We'll get a close look at that and in a minute. Yeah, there are some boots and other things back here. They were on sale. I just needed some, like, cheap boots for winter time, and that's what I got. They're a size too small, but they actually fit okay. Why am I? That's neither here nor there. 50% off. So I have another one of these to repot. I just, I love these metal. We'll talk about that when I repot them. And here's that soil. It's one of the Fox Farm ones. It's the Coco Bop. Part of my security camera is I'm going to try and hold still so that they'll shut up. It's a coconut core blend. It seems like it has some good fluff to it. It's a decent sized bag. And I've wanted to try more coconut core based soils for a while because next year I'm thinking about maybe making a transition over from peat to the it's just more sustainable and I've been reading really good things about uh, how mycorrhiza which is the fungus that helps promote good root growth and whatnot there's supposedly some really good performance with that type of thing and this is coconut core is something that doesn't need to be expensive but I was like I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this so that I'll have a really nice blend of something to use for tropicals during the winter time so that's what that's about. When I get to using it, I'll talk more about it. And back to the plants. Look at how cute it is. Such a cute little stinker. This is a teddy bear magnolia. It's a type of grandiflora, but it stays very small. I have had trouble finding these over the years just because I, they stay smaller and they're not fully hardy to my zone. I was already planning on getting one of these. They've had them in for a while. I've been eyeballing them since they got them in and then they went on sale because it's fall. And that's when the trees and shrubs go on sale. And I was like, okay, it's time. I have to have it. I've always wanted one of these. They're a very cute magnolia. Isn't that foliage just adorable? It's so stinking cute. They have really nice glossy green foliage. The leaves are smaller and more round than on a typical grandiflora or on like a Bracken's brown, but they still have that pretty underside, that brown, and it's fuzzy, which I assume is why it's called teddy bear. It's very soft and fuzzy. Yes, here's the tag for that, the teddy bear magnolia. It's a seven through 10. I'm in six B. So uh, if the winter's harsh, it will need some protection. It needs to go someplace that's sighted really well someplace i don't know maybe up against a wall yeah it's gonna go in place of this big magnolia next year it's a small plant to put there but it'll fill in someday eventually you can see that that is quite small for a magnolia not the picture's a little bit blurry i don't know what that's about come on now there we go hopefully that's a little bit easier to read like i said in zone 7 through 10 this is going to be a Really great plant in 6B. Have to watch it a little bit closer if there's a really bad winter. I may have to do some cutbacks and whatnot. I'll spray an anti-transpirant on it just to be safe, but I've always wanted one, and they're usually really expensive. I don't see them in the small seven gallon size pots very often. Actually, this might be the first time I have seen them offered in a smaller pot. It has to be in a small pot because um, this whole area over here is just roots. And it's not like I'm going to be able to just rip this magnolia out and then get back into the ground and throw something big in there. It's going to have to be small. And it's not just roots. It's also pipes. There are a lot of pipes. Tons and tons and tons of pipes in these garden beds. They all have to do with the drainage from the gutters. And there's drains in the ground and whatnot to carry everything away from the house and down and out in case this were to overflow or something like that. So I am really excited about this magnolia. I'm going to... Not the best thing, but I'm probably going to keep it potted this winter. I'll pot it up and 
there will be a video on that. I'll probably do some heat cables in the pot and then have a frost blanket ready to throw over it if the temperatures get really cold. I'd say if they drop below 10 the first year, really, it should be good to zero. But since it's going to be potted up, I want to be precautious with it and make sure it's ready to be protected at 10 Fahrenheit. And then, okay, yes, this was an impulse buy, whereas the Magnolia, I was already planning on getting when I went to the nursery. I was just hoping they would still have it. Um, but the... Guys, I'm just crazy about these plum bays. The Metallicas, they're just so pretty. And I have absolutely loved the one that I've had all year. And then when I saw this one, 50% off, I was like, well, I'm already overwintering one. May as well, I mean, why not? And look, at it came with a whole bunch of um, Wandering You down there. There's a little piece of Vinca in it. So that's just a bump. Okay, it was an impulse. But I'm, it's one that I'm fine with because it was cheap. That... This is the one I'm really excited about, though. Okay, perlite is dry enough. Doesn't need to be bone dry, but it was like sopping wet. It was, would have been too hard to mix it evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that alakaja repotted, but not. This is not efficient. So this poor thing, it was really overdue for repotting. Yeah, you know, alakajas and just elephant ears in general, I've noticed, do much better. Like the larger the pot you can give them, as long as it's not so big that they can't access the water. And like I said, it's not the most ideal time of year to be repotting, but I just would have had to water this poor thing non-stop all winter to keep it hydrated since I'm going to try and keep it growing actively instead of dormant. So I don't want to do that. I just, I'm not convinced that this is big enough yet to where it has a tuber that will survive a dormancy. But since I got the other one, I have that new one down there by the Magnolia, I'm going to experiment. So I'm going to let the one go into a dormancy and the other one I'm going to keep actively growing and also see this very very bad very bad I should have like noticed that from the get when I got this thing I mean that's terrible for an a la caja so I got lucky there was no rot or anything because it was warm and outdoors not the end of the world the plants using all that water but inside even in my grow space like that would be a disaster it would just rot and we don't want that to happen obviously so that's hence but that's the purpose of what's going on here the blend has a good amount of perlite and chunky bark in it i would prefer to get some pumice but i'm out and it should be okay i'm not too concerned about it it's a nice sandy well draining mix so like i said it should be fine with this i don't think there will be any problems basically the same mix I've used for all of my others but I just I would like to see some bigger chunks and more bark in there I did there's a lot of bark in this mix though if this were going to be in the house just being grown like a normal house plant then I would for sure get some pumice in here more pumice there's a little bit of um lava mixed in here but just not a ton this actually might be a bit too Deep. Oh, rice holes. Those work really well. I don't have any of those, but that does work really well. Main thing is just that there's nice sharp drainage, which this soils it's been blending or draining very well. Gave that a quick watering in. Water passed through nice and fast, just like I want it to. And uh, that should be good to go. Another thing to note is that if you do repot something like this and you're like, okay, that's not draining how I want it to, you can always top dress with some sand and poke some holes around everything and get that worked in and that can make a really big difference okay back to fanning out over the teddy bear magnolia doesn't it also kind of look like an elastica a ficus elastica i mean most magnolia trees evergreen ones kind of do but it has that rubber tree look to it and evergreen interest so hard to come by when it's you're not using like conifers you know i mean there's like holly boxwoods and those sorts of things but it's just it's something different. A nice, big, bold, broadleaf evergreen. So cute. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm fanning out. I can't help it. It's just so stinking adorable. Okay, time to handle this situation over here. Ugh. Sorry, guys. Those were so pretty. They really did well this year, but they gotta go. You can overwinter these if you have a warm enough spot and just cut them back and let them chill, kind of like you would with a begonia. But I don't that I have, an, I have enough plants to bring in. I'm not going to do that. Same thing with the strobilanthes, the Persian shields. I just don't have room, unfortunately. You know, I bought it as an annual. It's like $4. I 
and uh, I do sometimes feel like it's kind of wasteful. It's not kind of. It is wasteful. Annuals are wasteful. But it just, it, it, it is what it is. I'm sorry. I know there are people who are, who get upset about those things, but it just is what it is. I will go ahead and cut this one back though and uh, attempt something with it and just see how it does during the winter, but it's not something that's going to be a top priority. You can always take cuttings too, throw them in a little vase or something like that in the house, get them rooted if that's something somebody wanted to do. You can see this thing, it just, it spread wonderfully. It's, I didn't even plant one on the other side of the pot, I don't think, I think it just took off and it must have had a branch lay down and air wire itself is what I'm guessing. That's probably what happened. Nope, nope, apparently I did have two of them planted. I just, there's a lot of plants, I forget sometimes. I'll go ahead and overwinter one of them. Mostly just because <laughs> I've never even tried before, so may as well give it a shot. I am adding a hole. I'm gonna add a few holes to the sides of these pots. Having the holes right here, it's nice for aeration in these nursery pots, but it's also kind of pointless. They really, I like it much better when those holes are right along the side. Look at how easy it is to do that too. You just take a pair of scissors and these are not even, you can tell, they're not very great scissors, but you just come in, make a cut. Obviously you can make it more pretty than this, but that's it. And now there's drainage, much better drainage along the sides. <laughs> Wait, where's the, there, where'd I do it? There we go. See, now, I mean, you can make it more pretty than that, but I'm just breezing through here. Go ahead. Throw some soil in here and get that potted up. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna look and see if I have any gallon-sized pots. This is that's gonna take up a lot of space where I might want space I might want for something else. Aha! This will do because I'm gonna put this coleus over in that areca palm. So I'm just gonna take its pot. I should sterilize it. I'll maybe do that. Typically, would use a diluted bleach and dish soap. I just rinsed it. Not the best thing to do, but I don't know. Do as I say, not as I do. One of those things, hypocrisy, whatever. There. I'll go ahead, give it a try, see how it does during the winter. If the shelves get full, that's not one that I'm going to keep around. But I am interested to see how it will do in the grow space during the winter time. I think it should actually be a pretty simple plant to keep. Okay, and then I've gone ahead and popped in a cutting from one of those coleus plants in here. It's not a, I mean, it's a rooted cutting. It was growing along the soil, so it's not the most attractive thing. This isn't like a look at this beautiful planter transformation type of situation. I just want that coleus in here and rooted in case the situation should arise this winter when I've had it and I want to use a systemic. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. And uh, I think that this would be much more efficient at getting rid of the mealybugs because they tend to be more attracted to the coleus. So it would help deter them hopefully from the areca palm. It'd give me something easier to look at because there are so many nooks and crannies in the areca palm. It's really easy to miss them. So it'll be easier for me to look at this and see if the mealybugs are on there and uh, they grow more quickly. So it will transport that systemic more efficiently. I have noticed the areca palm, not the most efficient when it comes to transporting, transporting the systemic insecticides. Cause I tried it years ago, the few different brands and nothing did the trick. I think it's just because it wasn't making its way from the roots up into the foliage. Remember last winter, I cut all the foliage off of these and um, some mealybugs still survived. And the whole point of that when I did that last year was so that when I took them in, all the new growth would get that insecticide to help kill the mealybugs. And it didn't, nope, didn't work. <laughs> Definitely did not work. But so far things look okay. I just want to be prepared when winter comes around. So that's why that lovely little gem's in there. Okay, that was a lot, a lot to happen within a few minutes. Sorry about that. I'm not gonna take y'all along with absolutely everything I do to prep the plants to take them inside. Just thought there's a little sample of some things I'm doing uh, that would be too much. It would just be pure chaos nonstop. And it can work a lot faster when I'm not talking about everything I'm doing. That was a broad look at the gist of it. I will do a video when I get the grow room set up and everything. I'm actually probably going to spend my entire weekend cleaning the garage and getting it ready. And then I'll, I'll make, cause I've had people ask many times over the years why I don't have a video on setting up my grow room. And it's usually because the past couple of falls, the cold weather has come out of nowhere and I've had to rush the plants in. So there's no time to do a video on it, but I have done a video like how I 
set up my grow space or something like that. I'll link it below. Uh, but I, it's not like a beginning to finish sort of thing. I just kind of walk around and talk about it. Although I may go back and look at that because if it's thorough enough, there's no reason to do a whole separate video on it. We will see. I do have a video that will be out next week on bananas because this has become, I think, the most common thing I get asked about in the fall and winter is the growing the bananas inside and what to do with them. It's taken me a little while to get it edited, so I'm sorry about that. I've been kind of slow with editing lately. I've been trying different things with working with audio and color grading and stuff like that, and it slows things down a little bit. That's why I didn't upload a ton in September. It's just like two times a week instead of three or four like I try to do, and I'm probably going to keep on that trend until late November just because I, I'm liking taking my time a little bit more with editing. It sure it doesn't show on your end, but from what I see when I have the raw clips versus when they're edited, there's a drastic difference. And uh, it's a learning thing. It's hard to, I can't push out videos like really, really fast and still learn new things with the editing software that I started using last um, winter. It's just, it's Adobe Premiere and it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's not the most intuitive, like the basics of it are pretty intuitive, but there are a lot of nuances you could say that you wouldn't think <laughs> like there are things you wouldn't think of in order to use the software so on that note next week is going to be really really busy out here i will vlog but that vlog may not be out next weekend i may not have time to get it edited so there might not be a vlog next week i'm sorry we will see though i'm, I'm not sure maybe i can figure out something with a live stream or something like that i don't know Although if I don't have time to edit a video, I probably don't have time to figure out how to do my first live stream either. But we will see. I don't take weekends off from vlogging very often. There's pretty much always a vlog on a Saturday. I just kind of like take a step back and breathe a little bit. Like I said, I'll still be filming. There will definitely be a vlog uh, two weeks from now. Maybe there'll be one next weekend. I don't know. Um, like I said, working the banana thing. Uh, there were a few things that I wanted to address from... Uh, the garden tour video and last week's vlog. I know things were very redundant this week because there's just chaos with filming and keeping my mind straight, to be honest. But there's a lot of talk about what I do with my plants in the winter time. And uh, there's some of that in this vlog because it was filmed before I released the video that came out. That It's a whole thing. You get it if you've seen them. So I'm sorry about that. I think the points have been made about what I do with my plants in the winter time or in the fall to get them ready to take them inside. But there were a couple of comments that were talking about uh, can you move, like moving the plants in and out frequently and uh, that maybe that can kill them. And the answer is, yeah, generally once it's time, if there's just like a random cold night and I need to move the plants in, I usually just move them in. And from that point on, I leave them in. Some plants really don't like being moved in and out and in and out. Out. It's just way too much for them and uh, it can kill them. It can stress them out just because it's drastic changes in the fall time. In the spring when temperatures are, it's different being outside, but they're not extreme. Maybe not as big of a deal and it varies from plant to plant. Oh, and then I forgot to update in the garden tour that was out just a video before this one on the ficus dorata, the fiddly fig. It's looking good. It has grown a ton and I have done absolutely nothing with it. It's gotten fertilized and I check on it and everything, but that's it. I haven't even watered it. I'm not gonna lie. It's not like my favorite plant. I'm just kind of like, eh, doesn't really spark joy. Used to, but doesn't. I think that's partially because this one's a standardized one and I kind of like the ones that just have multiple stems and they grow up and get really jungly. But you know, I got this one for really cheap last year so we could talk about it and play with it. And then the frost almost killed it when it dropped to 28 degrees unexpectedly and then it bounced back. And so this is all new growth. All this is from what? Since December of last year, almost a year's worth of growth on here. And it's with minimal care and minimal attention. You know, it's a fiddly fig. I, just, I don't really know what else to say about it. People do like updates on it though. So there it is. It has grown a lot. And I, I should say like, I like it, but it's like, I go back and forth with it. Partially just because it takes up so much space. And I'm like, do I like it enough for something that takes up that much space? I don't know. I'm probably will just keep this in my house this year though, instead of in the grow space, because well, it's gotten quite large and wide. If you hadn't figured it out, we've gotten to that point in the vlog where it's update time. The alakajas. Would you guys be interested in a video that's like just my alakajas? Because I've realized over the last few garden tours and videos, 
I have a lot. <laughs> and and uh, apparently I really, really like them. I've always been drawn to them, but I just never really realized how many I had and how long I've had some of them. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. If so, it's something I got to film like now because I want to do it while they're outside. When things go inside, it's hard to film big plants because there's not as much room to back the camera up, you know? I mean, y'all see them. And most of the vlogs, because I put the camera on them a lot, especially the Ludias. I put those on a lot, so I don't know if it's something that would be worth its own video. Let me know. And a lot of them don't have labels, too, and I don't like doing videos on plants that don't have labels. That's, that's always bugged me. But, um, like, I'm, with these, I can say, you know, the Plumbe Metallica. Pretty certain about that. I know that these are the Ludias over here. Could be fine. I don't know. But like I said, you see this? Like, I would need to film this outdoors. It would be really hard for me to do this when I only can back the camera up like four feet away. Once I'm in the grow space, the camera's like right up here. On that note, another thing, I don't, this isn't something that needs to be announced, but I am filming videos for winter time now, which I know is going to be weird. Some people don't like knowing that things have been pre-filmed, but it just, yeah, I, I have to if I want to do a good job editing the videos. So larger plants, like uh, there have been people who wanted me to do a video on my false Aurelia, um, Dracania marginata, I want to do a video on that one. And they're just things that are too big that I, I won't be able to get them in frame once they're inside. That's all. Just saying that for people who have asked for videos on those plants and why they haven't come out yet. It's because I'm kind of saving those for winter time. Just a few, just so I have a few videos lined up in case, like, I get sick or decide I need to go somewhere, something like that. And they're videos I wanted to make. It's not like I'm not making them out of, like I didn't want to. I wanted to make those videos. It's just I haven't had the appropriate time to make them and then release them. Does that make sense? I can stop with it. Y y'll get it. You're smart. See, that's the thing here is I'm thinking out loud, but mostly because I'm trying to get things prepped and planned, not just with the garden, but with the wintertime and falltime videos. I, uh... I think I'm going to do Vlogmas. I've done it a few years in a row and I uh, liked doing it, but also like sometimes it can sort of ruin the holidays. So what I've decided to do is I'll just do like five videos a week, maybe even just four. So it's not technically Vlogmas. Vlogmas you're supposed to put out a video every single day. I don't want to do that. Y'all get sick of me. But um, I think for like the first week it might be fun to test and review products. Like maybe garden products from Wish or Amazon. They're essentially the same thing now, just one's more expensive than the other. I mean, it depends on the products, but I've just found a lot of gardening products. Excuse me. They're supposed to have a lot of storms rolling in here, so there's air traffic's been diverted. I can always tell when there's going to be a lot of rain and storms coming up, they change the way they fly. And they're always right overhead. As I was saying, I thought it might be fun to, like, review a cute, preferably cheap products <laughs> um, from Wisher, Amazon, eBay, something like that. Maybe things you've seen on Instagram. I don't know. I just want people to make some suggestions so I can go ahead and get those things ordered. Uh, I have a few lined up that are just like pots and things like that where they look really cute online. I'm curious to see how they'll look in person and how sturdy they'll be and um, other things like that. So if it's something like lights or growing systems, that's something I would have to order now because I think it's only fair to give those at least 30 days of testing before you can really review them. Otherwise, I thought it might just be fun to unbox some stuff and see if it's good or see if it's terrible. You get it. Let me know if there's anything you want to see. See? Waiting on another airplane. Next time you guys see the backyard, it will probably look pretty different. I know the big palm trees, pardon the background noise, it's just children having fun, but uh, like the big palm trees will probably be off to the greenhouse. Like I said, I'll film as much of it as I can. Okay, it's the next day. I know, very abrupt change. I forgot the baseball game started at 4, so I was watching the game. And then it got dark out and I couldn't finish things up, and it's going to start raining, like, any minute here. And it's supposed to keep raining for a couple days. So, it's time to wrap things- oh, it just started raining. Forecast just changed, it's supposed to be 35 degrees tomorrow night, which won't be in the vlog, because the vlog will have to be done by then, so I have to- I got some stuff I need to do. Gonna pull the heliconias in and some monsteras and lots of little things. The one advantage, I will say, one, one thing that was good about that random 28 degree night we got last October was that I learned how hardy some of the plants are. Like, the Vandas in the past I always would have been like, oh my gosh, I need to rush these in right now. 
nah, they were fine. They weren't touched by that cold, so I'm not worried about them. Actually, I learned that most of the plants out here, as long as it's only for like a night, the ground's still warm, the water's warm, most of them will still be okay as long as it's brief. But it looks like a few days after that 35 degrees, it's going to be like 39 again. So it's just that time of year where I'm going to start pulling things in. So like I said, the heliconias, anything that's like something that would be harder for me to replace, like maybe those Okinawa silver alakajas back there, my monsteras, and some other, some other little things. Not a big deal, actually. It's just going to be a few things just going to baby step it in. But what you doing? You smell the kitty? There's a cat at the nursery that was rubbing up on that plant. The Persian Shield. I didn't really talk much about this. So what I'm going to be doing with this, I cut it back, which you saw that's because it didn't have much of a root mass on there. And those roots, or that little bitty pile of roots that's on there, aren't going to be able to support all that foliage that was there. So I cut it back. It'll root out. It'll get nice new growth on it. And then I'm going to keep it under bright light and water it when the soil's like, I'd say maybe two inches dry and see how that does. But while I'm getting it to root or to take to this new pot, I should say, during that period of time, I'm going to try and keep it pretty much consistently moist as long as it's nice and warm. And then otherwise I'll keep it kind of like I would a hibiscus in the house and we'll see how it does. But I wanted to touch back on that. The reason that I ended up just not tossing that entire plant was because I knew that there would be questions from the garden tour about whether or not they can be growing during, during uh, sorry, whether or not they can be growing during the winter. And the answer is, yeah, but I haven't done it. So this is gonna be my first shot at that. So I can't, can't, excuse you, Tucker. Rude, startling my ass when I'm trying to make a video. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Stop it. Yeah, you get it. I, I don't know, I, you can keep them in the house. I just, I haven't done it. So I can't really tell you how to do it, but that's what I'm going to do. I mean, just kinda get under the umbrella here and uh, finish things up. I have a very busy weekend ahead of me. Have a lot to do, lots of garden prep to, well, garage prep really. Need to get the garage ready so I can start moving things in. Probably within the next week or two, a few things will be coming in tomorrow night. So just that time of year, I've accepted it. It's okay. There are pros and cons to it, so yeah. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out while all the chaos unfurls out here and just the randomness of the vlogs. It's just hangout time, you know? As always, I will try and keep things updated on my Instagram and social media, mostly just Instagram. That's linked down below. So you'll get in the pool when it's 40 degrees outside and go swimming. But a little bit of drizzle and you gotta hide under the umbrella. Y'all confuse me. Especially you. Look at you over there like, okay, we need to go inside now. It's drizzling. I don't want to get wet. He was in there swimming his butt off yesterday and it was freezing. But a little bit of rain. That's just instinct. I get it. It's fine. You do you. It's okay. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Hey, and don't forget to like the video. It makes a big difference for the channel. I really do appreciate it. So thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell because I upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out. And of course, as always and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.